From the EPAWA headquarters in South Allentown, Pennsylvania, it's time for Weather Weeklies, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The following segment is a weekly video blog, and the opinions of the forecaster do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the staff of Eastern PA Weather Authority LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martris with Weather Weeklies. And good Sunday morning to you, another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, January 10th. And if you've been following around, along religiously, like I know uh, many of you have, it seems I have my own little cult following here, from what I understand here, where the same uh, the same group religiously watches every week. But you're probably even thinking to yourself, man, I wish you would stop talking about these signals and, and all these uh you know, things are looking great, and things are going to change, and there's going to be a pattern change, and the stratosphere looks great, but nothing's materializing. We're still sitting here uh, January 10th, and as of today, we have no snow, no measurable snow will cross the majority of our location uh, locations, and uh, even the ones that do have measurable snow, we're usually talking about, like, you know, less than an inch here. So, uh, you know, not a lot of snow uh, across our, our entire coverage area here so far. Uh, yes, we did say this was going to be a second half, uh, you know, winter here. Where we're going to start turning the, turning the jets here a little bit. We're finally starting to see some of that changing now. Um, I'm going to get into that here, into this uh, outlook here. We have not one, not two, not three, but four separate systems. Now, of course, the first one's going to be a clipper. It's going to come through here on Tuesday. Not a lot with that, but uh, there's still four systems that are, are going to produce some snow, all right, and uh, which is better than zero that we had so far if you are liking cold and snow, which I know many of you are. So now here we got the cold in here. We've had the cold in here for uh, the majority of January. Of course, uh, uh, this video is done on Sunday, so Sunday is going to have your your warm-up because of a system coming up to, up our west, uh, but that is just going to be uh, very short-lived just this morning, actually. The temperature is going to crash throughout the day, and we'll be back down to below normal back on um, on Monday. So a uh, very short uh, one day warm up and then uh, of course this entire month so far has been below normal across our coverage area here. So these are the systems we're watching going forward. The first one here is the clipper system that's the 12th or 13th. Uh, it says that, you're the, that the, uh, the models are digging in the Nordic Stream Energy uh, you know, the Lido Coastal developing offshore. I don't think this is going to end up happening for our area. This is actually going to be, the Clipper's actually going to go to our north, and we're going to have a, a cold front uh, come through here, which could set off a band of snow or snow squalls or snow showers. Uh, might be another second band following that. That's still up in the air yet, but this looks like to be a Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening type deal. There's not an all-night deal or even Wednesday morning. I think it's long over with by then, and uh, Wednesday, of course, is going to be a very cold day. Uh, but uh, that uh, band, initial band, comes through later on uh, Tuesday, and then uh, we get some uh, coating to an inch, uh, coating to a half inch, coating, you know, not a lot with that. Uh, but if we did have some redevelopment close to the coast here, it could enhance uh, some of that snowfall, uh, but it's not looking likely. No models currently showing that at the time of this video. Second winter storm signal. This is actually, actually we'll call the storm number one, because I re reference this throughout the video here, storm number one, I don't count a clipper or a cold front, it's a storm. So actual storm signal. First one here is 15th, 16th. Second one, 17th. It says 17th, 19th. You're watching make it to 17th, 18th, because it's pretty much been narrowed down now on the model guidance. The second one, 20th uh, to 22nd. That's the third. So uh, there's, or there's three that we're looking at here, and they all fit the pattern. Uh, that we're in right now. We're going to discuss that pattern first and go through that. Before I go off this table here, though, I do want to show you and point out something very important here because it, people seem to overlook this a lot. We have temperatures in January slightly below average as a whole. We also have snowfall right here near normal, near normal snowfall. Even if we're going to get these, we're not expecting a big, uh, big uh, monster storm here, although that can happen. Uh, not expecting a big monster storm here. We're expecting near normal snowfall for this month. It wasn't until we got into February in the first half of March we're actually expecting well above normal snowfall. But right now we're expecting near normal for the rest of the month. I know right now through the first 10 days you have zero. You might get a uh, half inch or inch or something like that here on Tuesday night. It's still well below normal snowfall. But you have these other three signals here that uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a big raging blizzard here. You know, I know everybody thinks we're far behind, but uh, the point is we had this month near normal, uh, but we're basing this on a 1958 analog. 1958 
is still a very good analog for what we're using right now. A lot of people have asked me that. Is 1957, 1958 winner still looking good? And I say yes, that is the best one still by far, the best analog. And uh, the only difference is we're starting with, starting with this blocking about two weeks earlier than we had in 1958. We didn't have that start to be realized until about January 29th or 30th of 1958. And now we're going to be realizing it, but this week, this week we're getting blocking here. I'll show you that. Uh, in this video here, here at Madden Julian Oscillation, we have uh, wow. This is this is a uh, a tropical storm out here, and I think it's called Poly P A L I. I think that's what this is called. This is your Dateline convection right now, uh, and it's just north of the equator, about 10 degrees north, or pretty close to 10 degrees north. But that is your tropical storm that is enhancing your your Dateline convection, your Dateline signal right here. So this is we a phase eight signal for pretty close to phase eight going into phase one. This actually is going to drift to the south toward the equator here over the next couple days, but the uh, of course, the, um, the we'll, we'll still have the convection there, so we're not worried about that as far as uh, the Manitoulin oscillation is concerned. So this is these are favorable phases for um, where we're at right now. These are favorable phases for cold and snow along these coasts. Uh, they get better as you trans as you keep going forward here. Uh, this is this is the path that's expected to take here. Uh, latest annual ensembles currently in. Uh, phase eight. We're about to be heading into phase one now. These are very, very cold phase. These are cold phases. Here's phase one. What phase one looks like. Phase two is also cold phase. Phase three is a cold phase. So this continues into phase three. Or if the European is correct, is correct with our, excuse me, the GFS is correct, showing this little loop there through eight and then one. Doesn't matter. There's still phase eight. Look, looks like this. These are all cold phases. Doesn't matter what which one's right. We're definitely going to keep the coal in place here. We don't see that letting up anytime soon. So this goes all the way through the 23rd of January. We don't have any worry about uh, there not being the cold in place here. So we got the cold in place. We've had that for this month here. Now we're looking into the snow here. Here's the clipper on the cold front on uh, Tuesday. Again, this is just the cold front that's coming with this clipper here. So this is not uh, the actual clipper with the, with the heavier amounts. That's going up to the north. Uh, we do think there's going to get some redevelopment. That's going to help be too far east of our area when that redevelops and heads up in this direction. That's going to help for probably just Maine here or maybe Vermont. But, uh, you know, this this is going to actually transfer energy to this one here, but that's going to be too late for our area. So we're just going to have the cold front that's attached to this. So that's just like any other cold front coming through here. You get some light snow, snow showers, um, you know, just a period of light snow possible or snow squall with that actual front. And we'll be over the next couple days, but again, that just looks like a coating to an inch for our area. If that coastal low would, it would have de developed a lot closer back here, you could have added some enhancement, got it, you know, one, two, three, maybe even four inches of snow in some areas, but that's not doesn't look like it's going to happen at this time. So at least it's a start. You're getting your first measurable snow in many areas here. Now I want to go past this to the next one. The next one, or the next couple. Okay, here is a look at what we have in the pipeline. First of all, this is looking at the surface map, the evening, evening, of the evening of the 16th. You can see all three systems that we're going to be talking about in the video here. One is look, looks like it's uh, good, it has been sheared out by uh, the, 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 the southern stream energy has been sheared out completely. So you have one uh, that's going to be up to the north, another one just going to aim, head aimlessly out to sea like this. And uh, another one is going to be up here, like in the vicinity of the Great Lakes. These are going to be sheared out, so we're not looking at anything from that. And if you do get something out, it'll be very light. Okay, so this one here does not look like it's going to end up happening. The second one is the one we're going to keep an eye on. This is the one that everybody's talking about. This is the MLK weekend storm, uh, Martin Luther King weekend, Sunday into Monday. All right, so you get a big one here, potentially. Potentially. Does not mean it's going to be a guarantee, but... That's the one we're watching here. We're also watching a third one that's sitting back here. It's going to be coming in and enter the picture. This one's going to dive down like this and kind of take a similar path and then dig in. And then, you know, you have another shot of an East Coast storm here uh, around the 21st, 22nd-ish, somewhere around then. Now, somebody's getting the reason everybody's getting excited is we saw the GFS the other night. Everybody's pretty much seen this at Wallace the Models here. Uh, 18C GFS had this raging blizzard here. And everybody's getting excited going, oh, I think this was Thursday. Thursday, 18C. All right, so there's a big raging blizzard, and then you're showing these amounts here. These snow maps are going viral here, showing three feet of snow. I mean, it was incredible. And, uh, you know, people jumping up and down. Oh, man, I never seen anything like that. Well, this is, first of all, I just want to say for one, for one thing here, uh, I just happen to know. Here, here's Allentown, Pennsylvania, showing 34 inches of snow. I can tell you with certainty, in, in, as far as records were kept since 1922, they've never had a storm that dumped that much snow, ever. 
You had a blizzard in 96. You had several other blizzards that dumped quite a bit of snow. I think the highest they ever had was uh, 25.9 inches in one storm. That was a blizzard in 96. Well, this is 34 short of the map. So already, when I see this, I'm like, okay, well, you can just throw that one out. That's full of, uh, you know what. You would never, one thing you ever do in meteorology, you never do in meteorology is you, you know, people talk to us about uh, December. Well, you were wrong with December uh with with how warm it got and yes everybody else is wrong and people have admitted people have told us that too well you were wrong with december with how warm it was it was about 12 13 degrees above normal uh but everybody else is wrong too so it's okay nobody saw this coming when you do long range forecasting we we get the general idea that hey we said december was gonna be mild it was mild okay maybe it wasn't as mild as we thought but you never forecast a record ever in meteorology unless it's absolute certainty all right. We're going to put a winter outlook out in November, the beginning of November, and say, oh, we think December is going to be a record month and have 12 to 13 degrees above normal departures. People look like it, will look at us like we're crazy. All right. So you say, it's, yeah, it's going to be above normal. The general concept, it's going to be above normal. It's going to be mild in December. It was that. So as far as that's concerned, that's verifying a forecast. It doesn't matter if it was plus 12 or if it was plus 5. It doesn't matter. Still above normal. That was the general idea. So. We're not going to forecast anything here. You never see us put a snow map for two, three feet of snow, and it's never happened before. In other words, that was the point with that. So we go a little bit further here. We're going to show you some what are some of the ingredients that we're showing here that are very favorable. We have some blocking here. This is actually, people have asked us whether this is east or west-based blocking, and this is actually west-based. If the blocking is sitting over here, here's Greenland, okay? This is east-based. If it's on the eastern side of this island, okay. If, the, if it's on the North America side of Greenland, so the west side, this is a west-based block, okay. And it's centered right here. You can see where that is, west of Greenland, closer to North American, the North American content uh, continent. So that means it's a west-based block. So west-based block is good. You don't want an east-based block because that is not good for winter storms along the east coast. West-based is. That's all you have to remember. Also have uh, so, you know, Clipper system by this time has gone up into the Canadian Maritimes, and now this might actually set up what's called a 50-50 low. This is a, another blocking mechanism. So there's a couple different uh, blocking systems. What the blocking will do is allow these storms to come up the coast, uh, not come up very quickly. Uh, it, it keeps them from running inland, so you don't have a system cutting like we have today with a system cutting to our west. We don't have the blocking yet. If we did have blocking, we'd have one along the coast. We'd be, getting, we'd be talking about a snowstorm, and everybody would be getting, uh, all the snow lovers would be getting excited about uh, the snowstorm we're going to get today. We're not, obviously not getting that. Okay, And this is what we're talking about with the blocking. That is the North Atlantic Oscillation. Over for the next couple weeks here, it is expected to be uh, negative. All right, Not as negative as it was shown before, which is good. You don't want an extremely negative NAO because uh, you've got too much blocking it'll actually suppress the storm okay you just want it negative two negative two negative three that's good uh same thing with the arctic oscillation is your cold air source it's negative as long as it's negative that's great you don't want it here minus five six seven because then it means it's going to overwhelm the pattern it's going to suppress all the storms to the south these are in good spots if this is correct if this model is correct this is the uh, european model if the european model is correct model is correct with this this is a good spot very good as a matter of fact Good blocking signature and a, and good cold air source coming cross polar flow coming in, so that keeps your cold air locked in. We're not dealing with rain, okay? So we'll look at storm number one. Here's the first one, and the, the, like I said, the, the models are, are are crushing the southern stream energy coming across. You just have one little weak uh, northern stream energy here. Another uh, the southern stream energy just just continues out this way harmlessly and no big deal. So it just crushes that first wave. All right, the second one, when the blocking is in place, this one has everybody excited because you have a system that uh, once you have the blocking in place, system is going to come up the coast here like this, come across the deep south, come across like this, and make the turn, and you got a big storm out here uh, right off the coast. And then you have plenty of cold air, so this is snow. Now, the, people have been telling me, well, what about, uh, you know, what about the chance for that this cuts inland? Well, if you have a block up here, you have that block that we just showed you up there, this, this, it can't go... It, it can, you can't run through that block. It's impossible. It's physically impossible. So even if it did come up come up to the west here like this, it would have to transfer its energy to a coastal, and then you'd still get snow here. Okay? So, uh, you know, a couple different scenarios here. Uh, the, the, your two scenarios on the table here, we think, and we're not going to say definitely that is not going to cut, cut in. I, I never say 100% with weather. 
because uh, you get burned every time you do that. Mother Nature has a way of humbling you if you say it's definitely going to do this, because then you'll you'll uh, you'll be wrong. <laughs> it's the way it happens. So I'll give you a 10% chance that something cuts in inland or inland far enough to give us rain. 10%. That's it. The odds lie with this either going uh, up the coast, which is the favored uh, track right now, or out to sea is also a possibility. If the and that would be if this so we look just looked at this at the other page here uh, with the uh, Arctic Oscillation and the uh, and the North Atlantic Oscillation. If this ends up being a lot stronger than what's modeled here, then you can suppress the system. I think these are in good shape. If these come to fruition, and since it's the European model, I would I would think it would have the best chance of verifying. Then we're in good shape. If it's too strong, it'll keep this suppressed. So we're going to see a bunch of different solutions over the next several days here and my models won't get a real big, big handle on it until we get probably into uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of next week and even then you'll have some converging going on at that time but you'll have a much better idea if you look at the ensembles right now they're all over the place all over the place some have this transfer some have to have a has a Miller A coming out of the Gulf big bomb here along the coast some have it suppressed and missing out in this this direction like this but more of them are concentrated up in this area now so we're going to side with that uh, with the idea that it will come up the coast and effect give us our first significant snowstorm and that would be again martin luther king weekend 17th 18th and hey lo and behold there's a storm number three behind that 21st 22nd can't get too much into this one yet because this is going way too far out but again this is another signal uh it's actually a system's coming down here like this diving down coming through the gulf of mexico coming up the coast like this and give you another chance for a storm so there's a lot of a lot of threats here in the in the future here one doesn't work out you might have the next one work out i know we're getting further into winter here and you're like oh wow we keep pushing this back and i'm here i'm sitting here on january 10th with no snow uh again we think it's going to be a much more active period here this is the, this is a good start at least one of these has to produce you would think and i'm not just talking about this clipper because i'm not even including that in that as far as the ensembles i went through a big discussion last week about you got to follow the ensembles uh and a lot of what happens with the with these models here uh aren't always correct we talked about I, I really harped on this last week that we had a big cluster along the coast here for this sunday storm they're all this big showing this big uh, storm here and giving us a significant uh, at least interior snowfall and you can see very little uh, had a cutting inland here and uh, you see what happened here the, the minority one in this case here's your center low pressure for this storm today and all the rain we're getting we're on the warm side so we're getting the rain today so just because the ensemble show this out here it's not always going to be that way you still had five of the 51 saying that it was going to cut inland those five overruled the majority which were out here off the coast so you know if you have 51 of them to look at and and, and 46 of them are saying it's going to be off the coast and you're going to have a pretty good storm here you're going to side with the 46 over the five but in this case the five won so and the reason it did that i, th I think it all goes back to the southern stream and i think the european model model white uh, at least the older ones were doing that uh again this week but uh when you look at the upper area of vorticity the european model has a tendency to hold energy back and that's what it did last week so you know if it doesn't progress it progress the southern stream or pick up on the southern stream at the speed of the southern stream which is exactly what the european model bias is to do is to hold back energy in the uh the southern stream short waves here uh and if it's doing that uh, at that time, the last week we were looking at it, like it, it was showing a big, you know, it was holding back energy. We didn't know that at the time. So it was showing all these uh, all these low pressure systems in the ensemble group off the coast, when in reality, if that if it had properly sampled the southern stream and that bias wasn't um, showing the holding that energy back, it would have said all along, okay, it's going to cut up this way like this. You know, so it was able to phase a little bit sooner because the southern stream energy was a little faster than what it was showing. And I think that's what's happening again this week. We're starting to see the European model adjust to that now. But we have a lot of day, a lot of days to go with this. And, um, you know, obviously things are going to change through the next week here. Not uh, just giving up on the first system here, even though the models are currently shearing this out. Focusing here on the second one, too. But we also have a third one waiting in the wings behind that. And, of course, we have a clipper here on Tuesday with a cold front coming through. So a lot to talk to do over the next week here. But you can follow us in the EPAWA forum. Uh, we discuss this constantly, constantly, and update this with uh, the latest model analysis. And we're, all, we're doing long-range updates every single day. Uh, and, and any threats here, we're doing a, a continual model analysis and discussion with the forum members. So if you have not, if you've not joined the EPA WA forum, now is the time. Right below this video, there's a pocket meteorologist page where you can see 
and the forum. So get involved in this because this is this is where we're going to be discussing it, not on the main Facebook page. So uh, get involved in this. It's a very uh, inexpensive way to interact with our meteorologists. I'm Eastern PA Weather Authority meteorologist Bobby Marcher. So that is this edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, January 10th, 2016. See you next week.